All right, so uh, just so you guys know, there is uh, on the art station, the new challenges have started and there's now a props challenge. So you can spend 30 days or like 29 or 28 now, days on a prop. Uh, it's like a deep sea or underwater tech type theme for that, I believe. Um, yeah. Had a meeting with Microsoft. Interesting. Hello. Hello, Gavna. Um, yeah. All right. So we got, we got two portfolios. Which, what, what? What is going on? Why is my Wacom pen acting funny? Oh. That's interesting. No webcam. Oh my god. Thanks, dude. Oh yeah, get that saxophone. So I don't know what you're talking about. This is what I look like right here. That's my that's my uh, nose. Perfect music to turn the webcam on. <laughs> Where is it at? Where? What's happening? Whoa. Feels good. All right. So before we get into this portfolio, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Where are we at here? Actually, I have some windows open that you can't see. Give me a second. Fixed. All right, cool. So in the uh, Discord, I've actually also set up the Empire Challenges for the uh, for the month. The Notorious um, Fire Hydrant. Um, this one's actually really cool. So this is a texture challenge. So Sublime offered up his uh, asset with the low poly and all of the maps baked. So you can just uh, download links there. There's an image just so you know what you're downloading. And you can just texture that for the challenge. And then a uh, substance challenge is the chipped paint on wood. All right. Soren, what's up? Boo, what do you mean? What? <laughs> what? Reddington, thanks for the resub. Faith 3D, thanks for the sub, man. Okay, so, Mark. Those fries look good. I think that's the, that's the face of uh, good fries. I think those are fries. Must be in Amsterdam, judging by how the uh, sauce is put next to the fries. Must be. All right, so... Des Moines, dude, crazy. I used to go to this area. Hmm, unless I'm thinking of a different one because we have multiple multiple names uh, or multiple uh, reuses of the same name in different locations. Uh, yes, so 3D artist. We've got uh, a pistol, a not loading. There we go, a wrench. I'm just going to go back. We'll just look at it through here. Got a knife, candlestick, a pipe weapon. Oh, this is exciting. All right. Some spaceship mechanical deck, sci-fi door, car parts, car parts, asylum, bowling alley, score projector. That's a really interesting prop. There must be a... No? It's like there must be a scene to that. There's not. I 
What? 55 parter yet? What? <laughs> what do you mean? Thanks, man. Oh, thanks, Freezy. Man, we're all over the place today. This is so. This is how I announce. I just do this. <laughs> Thanks, Miranda. And then do this. All right. So, right off the bat, I guess I would say there's a few things that probably don't need to be in here anymore because they're only pulling down the rest of your content. Um, let's click through these really fast and just kind of look at them. Rendered in Octane, cool. So that was two years ago. Two years ago. A year. Oh man, cool. That's awesome, some StarCraft II stuff. What did, uh, what happened, what? What's up, Sublime? How you doing? Hi, Axel. Oh, this is that one's cool. I'm just click on this one. So this is this looks like yeah. This looks like yeah. So just uh, I guess while I'm here, I would look at this and say these cables. If this is a first-person shooter, back from lunch. Mm. So this is a first-person shooter or a third person. You could probably actually afford to just pay for the the meshes of those cables. Probably. So just just so you know, you, you don't have to bake those down. Right now they look like they're baked down flat. Uh, this one, this one's pretty cool. The uh, attention to detail in the middle versus on the top is pretty nice just because you get some area of rest. I would like to have a few details up here to help explain how this because like you think about like when a door is made or something of this like metal nature this is a saxon space um yeah when you when you model uh this type of stuff in real life like when you make it the idea of this whole piece being one piece is kind of it's just it's not money efficient i guess so like this would be made out of parts, right? So even if you put like seam lines on the sides here and then little like tiny bolts. Hey, Corey, how you doing? Oh, thanks, Curious, for the uh, link. Uh, I'll try and remember the next one. <laughs> um, you want to you wanna explain how things are put together and how, how parts like this stuff here. This is doing a great job of making this this large piece have sense, even though... Or, or, or make sense, I mean, while still being a large piece that uh, isn't, like, too busy. So it's just, like, not too much noise. So you just do, like, breaks here or, like, maybe a break here and a break here. So you've got a centerpiece and then this one. Actually, let's just do this. We're going to get into this one a little bit. So, dude, that sacks, though. Feeling it. How are you doing, Ricky? Dude, shout out to Sublime on chat again. Where uh, I posted your your uh, prop for making things, making things all textures. All right, so let's just do that. Why is that? Oh, it's just pressure sensitive. I see. Mm hmm. Cool. Mm. Let's do. Let's do that color. Okay, so you have this really large piece, right? Same here, and it continues down. So wherever there's like a, a curve here, like you could probably break this here and here, just because you think that piece would be like. Uh, that piece could be its own chunk that was like either 3D printed or uh, cut from metal. And then you would have like maybe a break here and a break here. Because this 
this piece would be its own, right? And then this would be a dupe of that piece, and then this piece would be its own. So then you got this one. So that's what is one, two, three. Um, and then this this piece here would be its own. So that's four. So just so you understand, like how parts are kind of. This is like how. This is how really good artists can basically sell the illusion of like how something is put together, even if it's fake, right? Um, yeah. And maybe like something here would be nice. Like uh, maybe an inset or a light or something like that. You have lights here, so maybe that would just be an inset. Or like an emergency light. If something's wrong, then that light actually then comes on. Maybe you have bolts here. Maybe a big one up here. Um, and yeah, oh, the other thing too is like uh, with how we're breaking this one here, you can actually uh, use that as a um, uh, as an excuse. Come on, there you go. Oh no, I was painting directly on the, ah. Um, you can use this one as an excuse to draw and see it, there you go. Um, to have those nice seams where like this piece and this piece meet. So you have like a nice little gap between there. So that adds a little extra detail without going like overboard with, with detail. Uh, let's delete that one, go back to this guy. So uh, you can see it too on the side here. It just needs to, you just need to cut these so that they're parts. Greg, what's up, man? Greg, learning juices, all the learning juices. So, uh, yeah. Other than that, I like the amount of wear. And uh, I think maybe the only thing that could really be worked on is, other than the splitting of the parts, is, is maybe like uh, looking at your roughness a little bit more and see if you can get some, some material separation or some other, like you've got some metal elements in here and maybe getting these pieces to pop separately from these. I don't know, this area right here looks pretty nice in the middle. The text is a little hard to read, like all the text kind of blurs together in the mechanical level one section there. It's like the font is really close letter to letter. But overall, this is pretty cool. Dude, I would totally put a can right here. <laughs> Some dude put his, put his soda down there and then he's like, oh, I gotta open up medical level one. Have to squeeze it out one way or another. My God. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's a whole scene too, which is pretty cool. I like the uh, lower lights, where where the ground is kind of failing right now. I think is you could uh, where you have these panel separations. You could actually just either drop those into the floor slightly, or raise them just so that the ground isn't as flat, even if it. I mean, even if it isn't flat, it's visually, it, it comes across as a flat surface, you know? So if you can, like, break those pieces up a little bit more. Jung, what's up? How you doing? How's it going? Oh, yeah, we got to, uh, there's some new metric stuff that they expose, Twitch exposed. We got to, like, uh, tweet out about the stream and all that stuff. We gotta get my concurrent number average up. How exciting is that? I'm also working on getting a sponsor, so that thing might be real. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I need to check my email. I haven't checked. Uh, someone approached me. So let's keep going through here. So this this piece. Um, so this is four months ago. A 2K texture map. So what I, what I would suggest doing with things like this is uh so i think that's blood i could be wrong uh, i like this flare here it's lens flares are kind of difficult sometimes to get people to like them <laughs> but uh the this detail normal i wouldn't have a detail normal on there unless it's for the little grungy stuff put some like normals in there uh and then the blood would be smooth 
I think that's blood. The blood would be smooth, and then, yeah. I think that smoothing that out would really help. Life got busy adulting. Yeah, adulting's kind of a thing. <laughs> it's kind of a thing. Like, uh, the, so this pipe, actually the bottom piece here looks really good because it's smooth and all of the information's happening in the roughness from what I can tell, like right around here. So if you could do that to the rest of this, you'd be actually in a, in a pretty good spot. And uh, with this bolt being welded here, it's pretty, it's strange to me, I guess, that this is like one piece. Um, the other thing I would suggest doing is making your materials like, maybe you can make this metal a tileable and you have your, uh, you have your, uh, you have the metal as its own material and then you have a detail normal that you can tile but this doesn't need a detail normal. It, maybe it needs a detail roughness. You could do that. Um, but uh, yeah, it doesn't need a detail normal. I would tile the metal material and then I would suggest masking out where the blood is and making a blood material. So you have a metal material, a blood material and a rubber material. And maybe this text, you would just do a cutout decal that you can place on there, or you could bake it on either way. Uh, to do the tileable materials, Putter, what's up? And Lou, hello. Hi. Um, so a tileable metal, a tileable blood, maybe a tileable rubber. And then in the second UV set, your UVs for there are for the tileable materials. Uh, and then your first UV set is where your baked normal and ambient occlusion would go. You will get a whole lot more detail out of this. And then where you want like all that, this rough information and stuff, just put that all in your roughness and see how it goes. It should, it should turn out uh, much higher res looking. Uh, Cause right now the detail normal, like if you took the detail normal off of this immediately, it would look better. And then the other issue is like kind of how the blood is, has the detail normal as well. So you expect that to be quite smooth. Uh, let's look at this. Uh, this one's pretty cool. Oh man, it's so what's really interesting I'm noticing is like uh, each piece I go to, I'm expecting to be able to scroll like this. And uh, Mr. Fly, yeah, you can ask a question, what's up? Hey Mango, how you doing? Um, most of these don't, you don't scroll. Does this one scroll? No, this one has nice details, it's a nice modeling job. Um, is this one? Yeah, this one's got some angles. That's good. But I'm noticing a lot of them, you just have the one image, right? And you're doing a, a pretty interesting presentation because you actually are letting your out, your asset go outside of the frame, which is kind of cool. That's even going outside up here. Oh, nice mango. That's a cool program inspiration for the game clue dude that's awesome that's awesome it needs to have some uh it needs to look like it's hit someone <laughs> you're like oh uh rendered in marmoset as well that's cool in general i would say this looks pretty good i don't think uh i don't think you need to do too much with it maybe if you wanted some different materials on it but if this is like a coated metal where it's like dipped in a like a gold like material, then I think you're good to go. This is weapon number two of six. Dude, I love that you know that you put that in there. That's so cool. Moto user as well. Mm. Mm, hello. So got a knife as well. Okay. And then I got this guy, this wrench, and this pistol. So looking at your the way your materials are being laid out, like the wood pattern here is kind of odd to me, but looking at how your materials are laid out and then taking extra attention towards your roughness is probably the key thing that's gonna really set your portfolio apart from where it's at right now. Uh, everything doesn't need normal maps as far as like certain transitions. So like there's, there's a lot of like nicks and dings in the paint up here that if it does need a normal map, maybe it's gonna be quite low but like, I feel like this would be much stronger if you uh, just didn't 
age up the the front panels and then the bottom here wasn't as like so heavily aged as well it just would be easier to read like from the back here this looks really cool just because there's there's areas for your eyes to rest like your eyes can rest here they've got this area this you can even rest here this area for the most part you can rest in this is nice to look at without like overly complicating your eyeballs um there's another area of rest but when you look like even on the top too you've got this one that's cool uh but in the front shot here i mean obviously it's a high angle too so it's going to be a little difficult but the only area of rest i think is this bottom piece down here and everything else is really busy because of all of the aging and damage and stuff here I would tone back uh, where your damage is occurring or like the paint chipping and stuff like that just to see like uh, see how how it feels without all of that uh, oh I see fly so um, fly if you're not on the discord you should join the discord put that in this channel where is it at here? Put that in here in the stream critiques, and uh, I will get I will get to it this stream for you. I'll take a quick glance at it just in case it might be okay. Yeah, so we'll we'll take a glance at it uh, when we get to the critiques. That's gonna be in about thirty minutes. Um. If you have to go, it'll be in the VODs, or you can go to the YouTube channel, which I will do this, and it will go there after the stream. Actually, I actually need to post the last couple, so. So the other thing, too, that you could really benefit from is the masks. So you've got all of this information, right? I would suggest just having your ambient occlusion and your normal map bake, and then a color ID map, which tells you what color uh, is what material and then uh, and then your roughness map and then that color map you can actually use to mask out tileable materials in whatever engine you need or want to use because if you do that then you can tile you could tile your materials as much as you want some materials can have detail normals while others don't like the metal could be smooth while the paint has like a little bit of a noise to it in the in the normal map but yeah overall this is a pretty cool cool asset i haven't really made too much uh sci-fi props so stuff's all alien to me um yeah and then this one is just suffering i think from uh your roughness and material types not being in sync definitely look at reference and ricky in chat can can totally he's in in the discord as well he could definitely give you some pointers on stuff uh overall it looks like you've got a, a selection of weapons and props to a single environment it's some larger hero type props and just some modeling studies i would actually suggest removing some of your modeling studies like i'd keep the the tire let's let's do this after this we're on to the next portfolio so oops i'll just shrink it in here that works so i would keep this one i'd keep that one this one you probably don't need just because it's not really showing your understanding of materials very well i would address some of the details on here and then keep that one i don't know if you have the source file of this or not but yeah uh this one i would keep but i would I would add those wires into the geometry. Um, this one you keep for sure. This one's awesome. Maybe break up the shapes if you want to. If not, that's fine. Uh, if you can adjust this one based on the stuff I commented on, I would leave it in there. If not, then I would take it out. This one can stay. Uh, the thing is, is I don't know if you want to be a 3D artist or a... A... Uh, like an environment artist or props or a weapons artist. I'm not sure. 
Uh, this one I don't think is showing your your um, better skills that I'm seeing in some of the other stuff. So it's just kind of pulling down the other the other things. Um, these this one I wouldn't keep just because of the I mean maybe if you could tune the materials it would be better. This one's pretty good if you tune the materials as well. So I'll put a circle on that one. Um, yes, and then your framing of the backgrounds for your images. Like I would totally make a custom thumbnail for each one of these. But yeah. Hey, Reeve, what's up, man? How's it going? I would love to see a breakdown of this scene too, the uh, sci-fi scene. Let me see if it's... Yeah, so, man, that door is sick. Yeah, so, I think... If you could do parallax on the floor, too, you could get a lot of that depth back. Hey, Eagle. What's the difference between a 3D artist and an environment artist? So, Evo, hi. Um, so, a 3D artist and an environment artist depends on what studio you're at. So an environment artist, I would say, is probably doing a lot more like composition, uh, more propping, and then more like large shapes. Not like hero props, but like large shapes. Um, they're usually helping and supporting level designers and getting their levels looking pretty while maintaining the level designer's original design. And that's a back and forth that'll happen. Uh, as far as a 3D artist... I would, I would argue that a 3D artist, and this is just my personal opinion, because these titles are kind of, they're whatever they are, studio to studio. But a 3D artist, to me, is more of a, like a props artist. And props artists in AAA today tend to be people that either uh, make the assets outright because there's not enough time to outsource it, or because we have a little bit of extra time, they'll, they'll build the props themselves. Or they're helping build documents and preparing and helping outsourcing, manage stuff going in and out, getting ready. Uh, the content that leaves the studio gets made and then is brought back in and reintegrated into the engine. So hopefully that answers your question, Eagle. Pod, what's up, man? Reads! Like this? <laughs> Just like that. Um, yeah. So overall, I think if you could, uh, do this scene, like this, this whole side area needs a little bit more like love. The walls are really blank. Uh, even if it's just panel, panel lines and stuff, helping get things together. Uh, if you get one or two more scenes like this and you clean up the, or not clean up. If you can do some breakdown so we can see all the stuff you made for it. High polys, low polys, bakes, ways you approach stuff, uh, materials. Just some breakdowns to see things. I think you could actually, you could get in. You could get into the industry. Oh, yeah, so you got panel lines over here and bolts and stuff. Like, you just need that on these. They're just big pieces. And the cables down here actually don't look uh, all that flat. But I still, like, they're still melting a little bit on the edge. So I, I would still suggest uh, modeling those. Dude, you could even have some of the cables come out and go across the ground. And then dip down into the other side or, like, connect to a thing on the door. Or, like, yeah, just connecting to things. Things interacting with stuff. Epic sax time. Dude, that sax. Anyways, all right. On to the next portfolio. I'll be back in, like, five, ten seconds. Yeah. In the right corner, the burger. So, Taylor, 